Our third video lesson for solutions in stoichiometry involves combining the information that I've explained to you in video lessons one and two, but this time incorporating a balanced chemical equation. So to explain this, we're going to go through four example problems stepwise, and each of them has different things that it's looking at, so there's a purpose for each one. As you'll look at this first example, we want to make sure as we're considering it that our equation is balanced, and in this case it is, so that should be the first thing that you're looking at. From there, you have to consider the information that you're given, and I'd like to point out to you that when we take calcium carbonate and hydrochloric acid, we are told specifically that 25 mils of a 4 molar HCl solution is added to excess calcium carbonate. Very important, that's telling us that the hydrochloric acid is our limiting reagent and the calcium carbonate is excess, so that saves us a lot of work. We don't have to figure out our limiting reagent. And as we go on from there, in parts A, B, and C, as this is broken apart, we are being asked to find different things. So let's start with part A, and we're going to look at how many moles of HCl are consumed in this reaction. So keeping in mind that we started with 4 molar HCl, recall from the previous video that we're going to take the 4 moles of HCl and we're going to rewrite that as the derived unit. So that portion of the information from earlier is used. So again, 4 molar is what we have for the HCl. We also know that we were given 25 milliliters of our HCl. Now right now, molarity is in liters, our volume given is in milliliters, so we do need to either divide by a thousand or move our decimal place over three places to the left to convert that into a volume term that's consistent. And to solve this problem, we're basically going to do the exact same thing that we did in the previous lesson. We're going to factor label our 0 0.025 liters that allows the liter unit to cancel and as we do our math so 4 times 0 0.025 we will end up with 0 0.1 moles of HCl which is what part A asked us to do so then in part B Keeping in mind that we know that we have 0.1 moles of HCl that we just solved for, the next thing that it asks us for is how many liters of carbon dioxide are produced at STP. And there's two things that I need to remind you of and introduce you to at the same time. Since our HCl and I'm going to take a minute and move this piece over so that we're consistent in looking at this. So this is 0.1 moles. We have to convert from hydrochloric acid over to carbon dioxide. So as we consider that portion first, because that's the stoichiometry, we can continue with our factor labeling. So this is 0.1 moles of HCl. From the balanced chemical equation, we know that we have a coefficient of 2 for the HCl. So for every 2 moles of HCl, we have 1 mole of carbon dioxide. Okay, so we're going to just simply divide that by 2. And 0 0.05 moles of carbon dioxide is produced as a reaction. Okay, now STP. STP stands for standard temperature and pressure. So standard temperature and pressure. And there's a nice little conversion that says 
that in every one mole, there are 22.4 liters at STP. So this is a nice little conversion that I'm introducing you to that we're just going to tack on to the end. So in every one mole, we're dealing with carbon dioxide, so we'll label it as such. There are 22.4 liters at STP. So take our value, multiply by 22.4, and our answer ends up as 1.12 liters, and then of course that would be carbon dioxide. So before we leave this example problem, this little conversion is new to us. Okay, so just make sure that you have that written down and that you understand it. So then moving on to the third part, the third part says how many grams of calcium carbonate are consumed? Well, this kind of asks us to go back and think about where we were at the beginning. So if we go back to the beginning where we calculated that this was 0.1 moles, we can just do a very, very easy conversion from this point. So we have a couple of options and I'm gonna just take you through the short version first and then I'm gonna take you all the way back to the beginning to make sure that you understand this full circle. So we have 0.1 moles of HCl, but again, I got as my answer from part A. Okay, so remember this is from part A. So from our balanced chemical equation, our mole ratio is two moles of HCl for every one mole of calcium carbonate. All right, so we did our mole ratio using our balanced chemical equation. Okay, now the next thing that we have to consider is in order to go from moles to grams, we need our periodic table weight. So if we go to the periodic table, and we add up the molecular weight of calcium carbonate, we're going to get 100, and we're going to add that in. So with the information that we have outlined already, and we do the math on it, that's going to convert us to 5 grams of calcium carbonate, that if you remember back again in Part A, this would have been our excess amount that we started with. So again, as I promised to go full circle, when we started out the problem, we were told that we had a four molar solution. So we went from four molar to four moles per liter. We were told that we had 25 milliliters, which was 0 0.025 liters. That was what we did in part A. And then I'm jumping ahead to part C and I'm going to tack on what we're doing right now. We said that if this was HCl, then by factor label, using our mole ratio for every two moles of HCl, there is one mole of the calcium carbonate. And then we want to go to grams, so we're going to add on our periodic table weight to end up with our five grams. So if we started with part A and went right to part C, what I just did for you in blue would what is what you would do from start to finish without breaking it into parts. The other thing that I want you to see before I move on to some of my other examples, because you will find that with these types of problems, they all follow consistent patterns. So what you just saw in this example problem is a situation where you are taking the molarity times the volume. You are then multiplying by a mole ratio. And then you are multiplying by a periodic table mass to end up with mass as an answer. Okay, so thinking about patterns moving forward, molarity times volume times mole ratio times periodic table mass will end up yielding you a mass answer. So the second example problem 
asks us to find a molarity if you have a mass of one component and a volume of another. Now you'll notice of the, the next three problems, I don't have them written out in word problems. What I did instead was I gave you the equation. Um, we do need to balance the chemical equation, so we're going to put a 2 in front of the lithium chloride to balance the chlorines, 2 in front of the lithium, and we're given 10 grams of the lithium, and we're given 50 milliliters of the magnesium chloride. So this would be a situation where... Again, if you have some lithium, let's just say that we have like a little box that's representing our solid lithium, and then we're adding it to a beaker, and the beaker has a solution of 50 milliliters of the magnesium chloride in it, and we're going to add the two of them together. Okay, so our goal is to figure out the volume. Okay, now... Just like I showed you at the end of the first example problem, I'm going to start out this problem by giving you the pattern. So when you have a scenario like this where you're starting with grams, the first thing that you want to do is you want to convert your grams to moles. So remember that when you convert to grams to moles, we're going to use the periodic table mass and we're going to convert to moles. After you convert to moles, then you're going to multiply by your mole ratio from the balanced chemical equation. And once you multiply it by the mole ratio, then we're going to do a division. We're going to divide by the volume that's given to us. Okay, so let's go through this. All right, following the pattern, 10 grams of lithium. Go to the periodic table. Lithium has a mass of 7 grams. Okay, so that gets us from grams to moles. Next step is to multiply by the mole ratio. So as we look up, if we're starting with lithium, we want to go over to the magnesium chloride. Why do we want to do that? Because that's the one that we have the volume for, and we want to get to, ultimately, molarity. So our mole ratio says that for every two lithiums, there is one magnesium chloride. And I'm going to stop at that point and do my math. Okay, now notice that all of the math that I'm doing is the information that is in the blue and then the green numbers. That will give me a value of 0.714 moles of magnesium chloride. Okay, now, ultimately, our last step is right here. Divide by the volume. So divide by the volume. Okay, now the volume is given right here. It's given that it's 50 milliliters, but remember, molarity is in liters. So we have to divide by the volume in liters. So we're going to move our decimal point over and then divide. And we end up with a molarity of... 14.3. And then again, remember you put capital M for molarity and then you identify your component. The third example problem is one in which you're being asked to find volume if you have the molarity and volume of one component and the molarity of another component. Okay, so here we have a scenario, again, where I did not give you the written explanation, but instead I've taken the numbers and I've placed them underneath each of the component parts. So we have sulfuric acid and barium hydroxide coming together through a double replacement reaction to give us barium sulfate and water. We're going to balance that by putting a 2 coefficient in front of the water. So switching back over to thinking about patterns. In this type of scenario where you have the concentration and the volume for one component, you have the concentration of a second component, but you don't have your volume. At this point, 
you may be looking at this and say, oh, that looks like the dilution equation. Be very careful because this is a balanced chemical equation. We have to make sure that we do this by factor labeling and not by the concentration type problem. So the pattern that we're going to use for this one is we're going to take our molarity, we're going to multiply by the volume, we're going to incorporate our mole ratio, and then after we um, incorporate our mole ratio, we're going to take the second molarity, but we're going to flip it upside down. So I'm going to call it molarity flipped. Okay, so molarity, three molar, Okay, remember again, you're writing it as moles per liter times its volume. The volume associated with it is 50 milliliters. We have to move that decimal point over. Okay, so there's our molarity times volume. So there's that part. Next step, I'll switch to a different color, is to incorporate the mole ratio. This time our mole ratio does happen to be one to one. Even though it's one to one, I still want you to include it. So it's one mole of sulfuric acid goes on the bottom because remember this is sulfuric acid. One mole of barium hydroxide goes on top. Okay, and that takes care of this one. Then final step, I'll switch to the blue pen. We're gonna take the second molarity and we're gonna flip it. Now why are we gonna do that? Well, if you look at the steps that I wrote out for you in the black ink, when you take molarity times volume, the liter unit cancels, so it leaves you just with moles of H2SO4. Then, when you multiply by your mole ratio, the mole of H2SO4 cancels with that mole of H2SO4. So if you look at what units that's left, you have moles of barium hydroxide. Well, right here, this concentration is barium hydroxide. So we have to take that molarity, and in order to get the mole of barium hydroxide portion so that it cancels out, we have to put it on the bottom. So that means the volume term, which is simply a liter, goes on top. Okay, so moles of barium hydroxide unit cancels. The unit that's left is going to be the liter. So in terms of your math, we're going to take our 3, multiply by 0.05, one to one mole ratio, divide by 1.5, and you will end up with an answer of 0.1 liters. And then again, identify what component it is. So the unit that would go after that is barium hydroxide. Okay, so you've gone through three different types of stoichiometry solution types problems. Here is our last one. Okay, so this is our fourth one. This time, we have a molarity and a volume for our first one. So here's our concentration and here's our volume. But this time, what's unknown is our second molarity. We have our second volume. Again, but don't get caught into the trap of thinking that this is a dilution. This is a balanced chemical equation. Notice that we have two nitrates on the left, so we need to put a two in front of the nitric acid on the right. We also need a coefficient of two in front of the hydrochloric acid. All right, so going back, starting with our pattern. This type of pattern will involve taking the molarity times the volume. Okay, notice that that's pretty consistent. You're going to start with the ones that you have two components, similar to what you did on the previous example. You're then going to multiply by your mole ratio. And when you multiply by your mole ratio, you'll end up with moles. And then we're kind of coming full circle to something that we did earlier in a problem. Once we get to this point, we will divide by the volume, and that'll give us a molarity. Okay, so let's start out. Molarity, 2 moles per liter of our HCl. Multiply by the volume. Move your decimal point over to get yourself to liter. So there's molarity times volume. The liter unit cancels. Okay, second step. Multiply by the mole ratio. Okay, now here our mole ratio is different. This time it's 2 to 1. 
So two moles of HCl, one mole calcium nitrate, allows me to get rid of the HCl, and now I have moles of calcium nitrate. Now similar to what you saw me do on the second example, I'm going to stop at this point and plug into my calculator. and establish an answer. 0 0.025 moles of the calcium nitrate. Okay, so I've converted from here to here. Okay, now at this point, I'm gonna go back to my red pen and highlight the fact that in the pattern it says divide by the volume. So at this point, we're gonna divide by the volume. The volume is 35 milliliters. Again, we're moving the decimal point over. We're going to divide. And when we do that, we will get a molarity for calcium nitrate of 0.714. Okay, so at this point, you are at the end of your third video lesson for solutions in stoichiometry.